Welcome to the channel guys. Today I'm going to be doing a top 10 list of my favorite inspirations from the house of genre parfums. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more great content. I do appreciate it a lot. And stay tuned for the giveaway details at the end of this video. Now if you're thinking of getting an order from genre parfums, you don't really know where to start. I do have 10 suggestions. Originally this was actually going to be a top 5 list but I found it really too hard to pick only five because they do have so many great options available and a really nice variety of fragrances to choose from. But I did narrow it down to 10 fragrances that I really enjoy, and so let's get into that list. Number 10 on my list is Serene Latte, which is an inspiration of Intoxicated by Killian. This one opens up with a really nice burst of coffee and chocolate. Honestly, this one does kind of have that coffee cafe vibe to it, really Serene Latte is aptly uh, named because it does have that kind of creamy chocolatey latte feel. There is also this sort of sweetness that I get in the background which kind of is like a faint fruitiness and to me that really mixes with the chocolate to also remind me of like a really nice fancy darker chocolate with some kind of fruits in it and it does actually smell really well. Um, I do like this mix. This one works really well. I love gourmands. This one is certainly gourmand leaning, although maybe not fully gourmand, although it is coffee and chocolate primarily. And so I do enjoy this one a lot. This is really great, definitely for the uh, colder weather. I don't know that this would be so nice in the heat, but definitely the coffee and the chocolate works really well in the cold. And I think Devin really hit the nail on the head with this one. This is a really, really good inspiration. And if you do want to pick this one up, it's a great choice. The next one on my list is Black Cherry. Now I have smelled the original and I will say this one is pretty close. It does have that sort of syrupy, boozy, cherry vibe to it. And it does have a little bit of almond that I also pick up. Now the almond I think is not quite as robust as the original, but it is still there and it is still a really nice composition and the cherry vibe does last for quite a while. Also if you do like layering, this is one that layers really well with a lot of fragrances so it's definitely something you're going to want to check out in that regard. And If you like cherry, of course this is a must have. Beautiful, syrupy, boozy kind of a, a cherry with just a hint of almond in there. The next one on my list is Bonfire which is an inspiration of By the Fireplace by Maison Martin Margiela. This one is actually one of the inspirations that I think is a little bit further away from the actual fragrance than a lot of the other options available. But nonetheless, this is really nicely done. And where I actually find this to be different is that it has a little bit less of that charcoal-y burning wood vibe. Um, so I kind of often describe this as a bit of an easier to wear By the Fireplace. Now a lot of people obviously love By the Fireplace, I love it, but for some people that sort of charcoal burnt wood vibe is pretty off-putting. And so this one has a toned down version of that. The sweetness is still there, you still get that sort of chestnut and marshmallow vibe going along with that, but that sort of charcoal vibe is indeed toned down. The next one on my list is Utopia. This is an inspiration of Roja Dove Elysium, and really I think genre hit the nail on the head with this one. It is nearly identical to Elysium. As I find with a lot of the Elysium clones, there's just a little something that's kind of missing from it, but this has a very beautiful citrusy fresh vetiver vibe going with it and does Elysium really, really well. And the one thing that I find that this one majorly differs is I get a lot better performance from this. So that citrus vibe definitely lasts longer. The fresh vetiver and the overall longevity of this fragrance is much higher. So I actually, again, this is one that I do prefer over the original because of the performance issues that I personally get with Elysium. I just don't really get very much pro uh, projection or longevity. This is a nice uh, solution to that problem and the price point is a fraction of the price. So if you do love Roja, uh, Elysium, but you don't want to pay the prices or you have problems with the performance, try out Utopia. You won't regret it. The next one on my list is a fantastic fragrance for the summer and that is Colonial 22 and that is genre's inspiration of Bergamot 22. Out of all the fragrances I've smelled from 
uh, genre parfums, this to me is the closest uh, facsimile. So it's pretty much 100%. When I spray this from the onset to the dry down, this smells like Bergamot 22 on the spot. The only real difference is, again, I get just a little bit lo more longevity with uh, this, the Bergamot note, but all in all, this is Bergamot 22, and it's Bergamot 22 at a much cheaper price. The next one on my list is Sapphire. This is actually a clone of Armani Privé uh, Blue Lazui. Now, what's really interesting about this is that this isn't a fragrance I see talked about a lot. I haven't heard much about the Armani Privé line at all, so I was really, really excited to check this one out. Really excited to see how it turned out, and this is a really beautiful composition. It opens up with this spicy sort of cardamom note, and underneath that is this bluish vibe that clearly feels blue, but is a lot different from things like the Bleu de Chanel and the Sauvage, and all those other sort of blue fragrances. So this one comes across quite unique in the opening as a spicy blue fragrance, and it eventually changes the entire composition into a blue sort of tobacco plum uh, sweetness that is quite a bit different from a lot of the other sort of blue fragrances there. And really one of the interesting things I find about this fragrance is that it does change quite drastically from when you first spray it until um, it fully develops in the dry down. And that really for me does make it a very interesting fragrance and of course it smells beautiful from the beginning all the way to the end. So this is a really great one, and this is one I think you can really wear year-round. So the tobacco isn't too heavy, um, and the spice and the sweetness, it's not too much. So you can definitely pull this off in the uh, warmer weather. I don't know if I'd wear it in the super crazy heat, but you can definitely wear this one in the warm warmer weather. And it does have some heavier notes, like the tobacco, that works well also in the cold. So I think this is a very versatile fragrance. Very beautiful and very nice to see this kind of diversity that genre does offer with Sapphire. The next one on my list is Ancient Islands and this is an inspiration of Zerjoff Naxos. So if you really like um, these tobacco sweet fragrances, this is a good choice. It has that sort of honey sweet tobacco vibe and it's really nice in the opening. I get this sort of um, citruses and lavender that um, is quite fresh and invigorating in the opening and the, the pipe tobacco starts to come in a little bit later and it's a very nice dry sort of a tobacco that does in the initial stages mix with that uh, freshness quite well. This doesn't have cherry as a listed note but I think somehow this dry tobacco mixing with the honey does create a sort of sweet kind of cherry vibe. It's not really a strong cherry but there is some kind of, of cherry feeling there. And so it does have that, I guess, what people often compare to Pure Havan. It does kind of have that vibe going to it, but it's very, very well done and it's really classy and beautiful. Okay, time for the top three on my list. And the third spot goes to Pendulum. And this is a clone of Initio Side Effect. This one is really so good. And this is one that really caught me off guard a lot. It's really beautifully done. In the opening, it has this kind of spicy creamsicle kind of a vibe to it, orange creamsicle vibe. Relatively quickly, this does transition into a somewhat spicy, boozy, sweet fragrance that overall is really great, an absolute powerhouse for the colder weathers. I do love this one a lot, and if you like side effect, or you just like this kind of sweet uh, tobacco fragrance, this is a great choice. Number two on my list is Luna Paradisa, and this is an inspiration of Killian's Moonlight in Heaven. Now, the one thing I found about Moonlight in Heaven is that although it's a really great fragrance, it's a little bit more quiet than I would like, especially considering I feel like it's a summer fragrance. It should definitely have a little bit more projection to, I guess, manage the heat a little bit better, and that's where this one really shines. So to me, it's really Moonlight in Heaven, but amped up. So you get a lot more of that riceness, which comes off as a sort of milky rice drink, mixing in with the um, coconut, which is quite prominent, and also there is a fruitiness there too. So you get that beautiful sort of gourmand coconut rice cake mixture with a bit of fruitiness, 
but in my opinion you get it a little bit more amped up which i really enjoy about it um because that is one area that i certainly felt uh, felt like uh, moonlight in heaven was lacking so if you like the rice note and the coconut and you want a sort of more amped up version of those this is definitely the fragrance for you luna paradisa and the number one spot goes to one of my favorite freshies and of course perfect for the warmer weather and that is none other than Aquatica, which is an inspiration of Creed's Arolfa. Now to me this is really, really right on point with Arolfa. You get that really punchy mint and it has this sort of like crisp freshness about it. And deeper in the composition as it starts to dry down, that sweetness from the ambergris certainly does also start to show up in this one. So it's really, really a beautiful inspiration. Very, very well done. And the only thing I find is this one does have a little bit more projection. And the longevity is about the same. I get about five, six hours uh, with this one. But all in all, I think that is one of the uh, downfalls of Arolfa is that the projection only lasts maybe about an hour. For this, you will get louder projection and for a longer period of time, which I think works really well in the summer, you do kind of, or at least I do, kind of want something that smells a little fresher, a little bit longer. And Creed Arolfa is really one of my favorite freshies. A very, very good copy of Creed Arolfa. I just find that it is amped up in all the right ways, making this, in a lot of ways, a preference because it is much cheaper and the performance is better as well. So for one lucky subscriber, I'm going to give away this decant of 33rd Wonder, which is a clone of the Labo's Santal 33. I actually think it's a really, really good clone. It's just not really a fragrance that I love. So I want to pass that on to somebody else who maybe wants to try genre parfums or really loves a Santel 33. This is a great option. All you have to do to be in the competition is like the video, subscribe, and leave a comment down below. And I'll be picking a winner in a week and I will post a video about that so that we can get in contact and I can get this sent to you. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. If you're looking into the house of genre, Really, there's almost nothing you can do wrong because they have a lot of really, really great fragrances. But these are my top 10 so far out of all the ones that I have smelled. But that's it for this one, guys. So don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.